Hello, my name is Olivia Lobalbo and I am the president and founder of Arrow Animal Education and Rescue Organization. Uh, today we wanted to start and talk to you about our box turtles. This is um, a big time of year for them. So we're getting a lot of them coming in, a lot of them needing rehabilitation, and then a lot of them needing to go out to release. All of these guys have to go out to release by October 1st. So it's a lot of work. Um, otherwise they have to stay over the winter and they cannot release until May 1st. So we have this short window that is crazy full of turtles. Um, the reason we wanted to talk to you guys about them today is because, well, a couple of reasons. A, who doesn't love a turtle? They're so cute. We get a ton of them in and there are some easy steps that we can do at home to keep them out in the wild and have them not go into rehabilitation. Um, I want to introduce you to a few of them today and some of the hurdles that they're facing. Um, all of these guys are in rehab, so we're not going to handle them too much. I don't want to stress them out anymore, but I do want you guys to have a good look at, at what's going on. And a lot of the time, the best medicine is prevention. So if you guys can have this on your radar and be aware of it and keep your eyes out for these kind of issues, then maybe you can help these guys, you know, to avoid some of the issues that we're having. So we'll start. Um, so a few of the issues that these guys have that they end up coming into rehab for is the biggest ones, hit by car or lawnmower, weed whacker, any big machinery. Um, also hit by construction vehicles and construction sites. Those big, hard crashes that really crack the shell and cause a big damage to the shell itself. Now, these box turtles have this hard outer layer that is a shell. It's, it's connected, it's a part of their body, it grows with them. And it has, I mean, it's a bone. So it can crack just like your arm or your leg and rehabbers and doctors can work together, veterinarians, and they can place the shell and it can grow back together just like your arm or your leg. Uh, you know, when you were little, you broke it and you were in a cast for a couple of weeks. It's the same idea for turtles. The difference is that turtles do everything slower, right? They're slow animals. So it takes a lot longer for them to heal, for that crack to kind of fuse back together and be strong again. Um, but that is one of the bigger ones that we face. The second one is pesticides. And you keep hearing about this and everybody's saying, oh, pesticides, they're terrible. But you don't really know too much about it. Um, I don't know too much about it. I've actually interviewed our local pest control company and they came through and said that although these animals are, or these uh, pesticides are tested and they're approved, the side effects on animals still exist, but they aren't permanent. So that's the big difference. So when they did the tests with some of these pesticides and they were sprayed on the animals, it did, especially with box turtles, it caused a lot of swelling of the eyes and the ears, but it was a temporary problem. The thing about it is, e yes, the swelling might go down, but in the meantime, it's caused all these secondary infections. It's caused, you know, not just the swollen eyes, but now we have an ear infection. I'm going to show you a girl today whose ear infection has spread and it is, it's a little scary to look at, but it's turned into this dead necrotic tissue and it was too late at that point when we found her. So we are trying to clear her up. The vets have given antibiotics and vitamin A, which seems to do a lot of good, but I'll introduce you to her in a minute just so you can see the problems. And then I'll try and give you guys tips on how to avoid getting all these pesticides all over them. Um, and then the last one is our dogs. I have a dog, you guys have dogs. Dogs love to chew up turtles. Oh, it, it breaks my heart. It happens. You know, I'm going to give you some more tips on how to avoid that. So let's start by introducing one of my turtles. Um, I'm going to have to go grab them and then I'll wash my hands in between. I'll try and be quick. I have temporarily misplaced my turtle. I put him and his container down and I don't remember where I put him. <laughs> this is a common problem with turtles. Oh, here we are. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I placed him all the way over there, her. 
Um, so this is a, a good healing shell. So let me show you guys. I'm sorry. Say hello first. This is our turtle friend. And you can kind of see, and she just got out of the bath, so she's a little wet, but you can kind of see this crack. And it was all along this edge. And what we ended up doing is you put brackets on either side and you twist them together. And if you, just like I said before, you're kind of placing that bone. And then she sat there with this shell placed for so long that this part of the shell is completely immobile now. Before it was barely on. She is very aggravated. I'm gonna put her down. But you can kind of see just how strong this shell is. It's no longer painful. It's just a regular part of her body and it can protect all over again. I can kind of knock on it, nothing's happening. She's a little irritated with me. We'll put her down. But um, when we have these shell fractures, we see, you know, you see them on the side of the road, you see them in construction sites. Maybe you hit it with your car, you hit it with a lawnmower. Um, really important things to look for is if it's completely shattered, crushed, falling apart, maybe getting it to a veterinarian to humanely euthanize is the best idea. But sending a picture first to your local rehabber is a good idea because sometimes I'll get pictures that a vet will send me and say, somebody came in to euthanize this turtle, what do you think? And I've seen them, just horrible looking turtles, get their shells placed, get wired back together and recover. And it's amazing, it's, it's absolutely amazing. So I don't like to give up on them quickly. I like to give them time. It does take time. A lot of the times they end up wintering over. Um, that's not a big deal. They, you know, you always hear these people say they're so territorial, these turtles, that if you take them out of their one mile radius, they're not gonna eat, they're gonna wander to death. They don't do that here in rehab. Um, we always want them to go back to where they came from because they are territorial and studies have shown that, but they are gonna eat here. They are going to be comfortable here. Um, staying a couple of months doesn't seem to bother them they go back out they know where they are when we do the releases it's amazing so don't feel too bad for having them go into you know rehabilitation some animals just do better than others and turtles are one of the ones they're just so laid back that they're kind of like well here i am but she's feeding me whatever for now this is fine um and but of course we want to get them back out into the wild where they came from and get them on their way let me wash my hands here really quick in between. Um, and our second turtle we're gonna look at is the pesticide one. Now, if you have a weak stomach or if you're really squeamish, you might wanna just fast forward or look away for just a second, but let me grab her really quick. Ooh. At least I put her right next to me so I didn't have to go looking for her. <laughs> um, and you're gonna see, she's actually opened her eyes for the first time today but she still has a lot of swelling on this side, but we were able to get the swelling to go away on this side. It was so swollen and necrotic and dead, it's taken this eye from her and part of the tip of her nose. It is horrific. She is probably not releasable. Um, we're working with the vet today, and we've been working with the vet, but we're going back today just because she opened her eyes today and we're gonna start on this other side. Um, she has to be sedated every time that we do these, you know, flushing out the gunk out of her ear, but it wasn't just her ear. It was all kind of connected and, and, and eaten away and horrible. Um, and that's all from a pesticide and it's a secondary infection to the pesticide is our understanding. Now, when we got her, oh, I'm sorry, she actually did come from a pest control um, company who sprayed her and said, I'm really sorry, it caused a lot of swelling of the eyes. Um, you know, he, he had told the homeowners and the homeowners kind of kept an eye on her. Clearly it did not heal. Um, and these, these take time. These take time to build up that gross, big, awful terribleness. So when it comes to, when it comes to pesticides, if you see them being sprayed, if you sprayed them yourselves, the best thing to do immediately get it up and call your wildlife rehabber. Don't keep it out in the yard. Don't keep an eye on it and say, oh, maybe next week she'll move. She's not moving, weird. Like those are things that, you know, it doesn't occur to a lot of people that these guys do. They move around a lot. Um, they shouldn't sit stationary for long periods of time because that's, that's a sign that they're not doing so good. You know, whenever I see them out in the wild, they're just, they're going right through my yard and they're eating something and then they're gone and that's it. And that's pretty much their standard. They like to live in, you know, the woods or um, grasslands, things like that. They don't want to just sit in your mulch for, for days and days and days. That's when these infections really start to build up. Um, they really start to get terrible. 
And of course, you know, the other part of that is people sometimes want to take them in and help them, right? They think, oh, I've had a pet turtle when I was little. I know how to take care of it. But it's not as easy as just bringing it into your house and keeping it as a pet and offering it lettuce and then being like a month has gone by and now her nose is starting to get eaten away. That's not good. That's not good. It was real bad. Um, and it's, it's all from people trying to do the right thing. They want to help. But you really need to, to phone in. You need to call your local rehabbers. If you don't know your local rehabbers, there usually is an online list from your state. Um, we're all state licensed here in Virginia. So if you call the Department of Game and Inland Fisheries or the Department of Wildlife Resources, uh, they're going to be like, here's Olivia's number. Here's your local rehabbers if somebody's closer. And it's really important to reach out to them and say, this is what happened. No guilt, no shame, no judgments. This is what happened. There was some pesticide, it got sprayed. I mixed it up at home. That's another one that we hear a lot about. Usually the pest control companies, they, they, they do a scan of the gardens. They, they mix them up a little bit better. Um, I don't know that for total fact, that's just what I've been told, but it, it is usually homeowners who are spraying and get these horrible, horrible, horrible uh, side effects from it. Um, and that's from usually improperly mixed pesticides is what I was been told. I am not a pest control person. So all secondary information, I would definitely do your own research. If you're hiring somebody to come out, sit down and talk to them and say, you know, what is your protocol? What do you do? Do you search the garden first? Do you look for these animals? If you spray them, what do you do? Um, my cat in the background, <laughs> it scared me. <laughs> what is that? Um, but those are things that we definitely want to, you know, keep an eye on and make sure that we're not making the wrong judgment call when we're trying to help. Super important. Um, also with the turtles, with the hit by cars and everything, the other thing that I really want to emphasize is when you see a turtle going across the road, you can't just stop traffic and, and get out of it. It's like the highway, but if it's like a two lane road, you can pull over very calmly when no cars are coming, you know, safety first for you, pick them up and just carry them in the direction that they were going in. If you carry them the direction that they were going in, they will mosey on their way and be done. If you put them back to the way opposite of where they came from, they're just gonna cross the road again. Super important that you make sure that you take them in the direction that they're going in. But that's another really awesome way to really help these animals. So checking your gardens, talking to your pest control companies, making sure that they have a protocol for these animals, not just our turtles, our birds, our mammals, all of them. Do you have a protocol? What happens? Are you searching the yard first? Um, what kind of chemicals are you using? All of those are good questions to ask. And let's help these turtles get from point A to point B. Super helpful. And if you see them on the side of the road after they've been hit, if you have the stomach for it, take a look at them. If they're still alive, get them help. Either A, we can fix their shell, place it, and get them right back out, or B, we can humanely euthanize them if they're really in terrible shape. They're slow to do everything, including die, but you don't want them out there on the elements suffering. So the more help we can get them, the better. All right, let me wash my hands one more time. And I'm gonna introduce you to our third friend. Let me go get him out of his little Tupperware. And he has been chewed up by our doggy friends. Hold, please. This is an older guy, he's very cute. And you can see he's trying to box still. You got some junk on your shell. Oh, there we go, okay. He's trying to box, he does not wanna be seen. But you can see the back here. This is dog's favorite places to chew up. It's this, this over the hinge part, the part that actually helps them to box. And you can see his face boxing was taken away so he can't box properly. Um, he's not fully healed yet. So when he's fully healed, we make judgment calls on, can you go back out in the wild? If they can't box at all, there's no boxing at all, there's no protection. So sometimes they'll become non-releasable, education animals, things like that. Um, but most of the time, you know, I wanna get them back out into the wild. That's my main goal. Um, and something as simple as this chewing on the back and stuff like that, don't think it's the end of the world. Your dog doesn't know the difference between a ball and a turtle and don't get mad at them. I mean, I, it breaks my heart to see some of these animals come in like this. But at the same time, it's hard to blame another animal. You know, those turtles, they just, they walk right in front of the dogs. And what's the dog supposed to do? Let me put you guys back there. I'll get you in your Tupperware. Let me clean my hands. 
Um, whenever you handle these animals, please wash your hands afterwards, wear gloves, anything to, you know, just kind of keep their germs to themselves and your germs to yourself. Um, we don't want to pass anything to anyone. Also, um, your list of local rehabbers, again, on your Department of Game and Inland Fisheries, Wildlife Resources, some state affiliation. Um, there's also federal lists of wildlife rehabbers and they should be in your area. Get in touch with them. Even if it's a stupid question, you think this is, this is silly. Why would I even ask? Just ask. We love to hear the questions. We get them all day long. Um, and sometimes our biggest frustration comes from the, the person who didn't ask, who should have asked a long time ago. And, um, you know, we could have done something then and maybe now we can't do something. Um, that's the case with this little girl with the pesticides. Again, they had the best intentions, but if it had been sooner, we might've been able to do more. Um, but yeah, don't give up on these guys. These guys are from the dinosaur era. They are built to survive. They are so cool. They have so many adaptations. I absolutely love them. Who doesn't love turtles? Help them out. Do your best, you know, again, researching those companies, helping them across the road. And if you know that there's a turtle in your yard, don't let your dog out. Just let the turtle do his little thing. Give him an hour or two. You can even take him and place him on the other side of your fence. Um, I have a whole another video on how to properly pick up a turtle without hurting it. So you guys can reference that. Just pick him up, get him out of the yard, get him back into the woods, get him back into the grasslands. They will thank you for it. And then we'll have more turtles. Side note, you know, we'd have to call less pesticide companies if we had more turtles out because turtles primary diet when they're young, slugs, spiders, worms, all of those guys help save the turtles and you won't have to call pest control anymore. Just a thought. <laughs> Hope you guys have a good day. Bye-bye.